Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby and today I'm gonna be doing my April wrap up. Because it's already, like, April's already over. Can you believe this? Like, it's May, excuse me. I, I just can't. And in the month of April, I had so many things going on. I had so much. You know, I moved in the month of April. We also had Spring Flingoween in the last four days of April, which was a super fun readathon that I hosted with Olivia and just all kinds of stuff. But I was able to read 15 books this month, which was pretty, you know, pretty awesome. I'm pretty proud of myself for being able to read as much as I did this month. I did have three different DNFs that I want to tell you about that I'm pretty sad about. Like the major one that I'm sad about is Fool Me Once. I got 120 pages into this and I'm not even kidding you when I'm telling you that I try to get into this book so many times. Like I want to love this book so badly and I tried to read it once in March and then I picked it back up again in April and then I put the audiobook on hold at my library and then I tried to listen to the audiobook to get into it and I just can't get into this book. I don't know if it's me or if it's the book or what it is, but I just, ugh, I'm so sad because I really want to love this book, but I'm just not connecting with it right now. So so it's a DNF for now. I also DNF'd House of Hollow during Spring Flingween. I got about like 88 pages into this one and I'm just totally, I don't know, I'm not sure if this is going to be my thing or not. It's reading a little like young adult fantasy horror, but it's just not something I'm connecting with right now. So it's a DNF for now. And then also this book called Out There. And this is one that I'm still excited about, you know, because it's a sci-fi book and it's a collection of short stories and, you know, it compares itself to like Black Mirror. But I only got like 57 pages in and I don't know if it was just like I just wasn't feeling it this month. But this one's also a temporary DNF for now because, you know, it's short stories. So I can always get back into it when I'm ready. But yeah, I DNF those three books, which was kind of a bummer. But out of the 15 books that I did read this month, I read nine thriller books, which like, holy shit, I was just on another thriller kick this month. And then I had three graphic novels. I had one memoir. I had one romance and one horror book. And then for my ratings this month, I had three five stars. I had six four stars, one three star, two two stars, and one one star. So I mean, I did have a one star, which was unfortunate. But I, for the most part, I did have a pretty good reading month. Like most of my ratings were on the higher end. I also wanted to let you know that if you are on my Patreon, then this month in the month of April, I uploaded an hour long video of some canceled videos that I've had throughout the years. I think it has like six videos within that one hour long video. And it's just a bunch of videos that I've canceled over the years. I actually have a bookshelf reorganization video in there. I have a come book shopping with me video in there and a couple different reading vlogs and things like that that I've canceled. So if you're interested in seeing that it is available now to watch on my patreon in the month of april we also had a really fun heart stopper watch party on my patreon where we watched the first three episodes together live and it was just so much fun so if you're not on my patreon you might want to consider joining for next month because i have exciting things planned for patreon in may anyways let's just jump right into the books the first book that i read in the month of april is one that i'm very excited about because it's keep it in the family by john mars and if you're thinking to yourself what the heck because this book doesn't come out until october john mars was kind enough to send me a super advanced copy of this book because he uses my name in the book and it's like it's not really like a big deal or anything it's like literally one tiny article that says my name in it it's like on page 30 something so it's like right at the start and it's like not even a main character or anything like that but just how cool he just asked if he could use my name for like one of the people that he's interviewing in the book or whatever or like one of the characters that needed to be interviewed and so it was just kind of a cool thing so he sent me this book early for review because my name is in it so this story it essentially just follows this couple who they get this house that they think is kind of sketchy and kind of strange, but they decide that they want to turn it into their dream home. And while they're going through that process, Mia falls pregnant, which kind of, you know, it's a little bump in the road that they weren't expecting to have to deal with while they're trying to get this house up and running. And then Mia discovers a chilling message on the freaking wall that says, I will save them from the attic. And it's this whole mystery, you know, of them trying to figure out like what exactly was going on in this house before they got it. I want to be super vague with my review just because this book isn't coming out for so long, but I enjoyed this one. I thought it was creepy. I thought the atmosphere was spooky. And I do feel like this book might be John Marr's most dark book to date, at least from the ones that I've read from him so far. I feel like this book was very dark and like unexpectedly dark at times. And I was like, holy crap. But this family is just so twisted. They have a lot of secrets. There's a lot of history to this house. It's just 
very interesting. I gave this book four stars. The second book that I read this month was Crying in H Mart, and this one is a memoir. This is a book that uh, really hit me hard this month because if you didn't know, this is kind of, you know, it's a memoir, so it's a true story about this woman, Michelle, and how she got a phone call that her mother was sick and that she had cancer and she had to fly back home to Eugene, Oregon to go and spend some time with her. And it's kind of like this memoir is, you know, the story of like her and her mom and like their relationship and how their relationship was sometimes complicated and this book also talks about you know Michelle's Korean identity and how she always felt so seen by her mom because her mom was really the only like Korean adult figure that she had in her life because her dad was white and god this book was just beautiful like as someone who's like super close to my mom this was a tough book to read because I cannot even imagine There's just so many beautiful quotes and so many beautiful moments that I saved from this book that will stay with me for such a long time I actually listened to the audiobook as well and the audiobook is freaking incredible. I also didn't even know until after I had read this that this girl, Michelle, she's in the band. She's the vocalist for the band Japanese Breakfast. And so I was listening to some of their music after this and I just felt very connected to like Michelle and her story. It was just so beautiful. And this is such a beautiful memoir and nonfiction book about grief and about loss and about mother and daughter relationships. And I thought it was beautiful. It was stunning. I gave it five stars. I freaking cried. The next book that I read this month is One of Us is Dead by Geneva Rose and the author was so kind enough to send me a copy of this book. This is a thriller that I was very excited, very hyped to read because I saw a lot of people comparing this to like The Hunting Wives or like Big Little Lies where we're following a group of kind of like suburban wives and there's lots of like drama and gossip and there's murder because very much like Big Little Lies, this book opens with a scene where one of the main characters is being interviewed by a detective and she's like, yeah, you could have asked anyone. Like, we all knew it was eventually going to lead to murder and it's like all mysterious because you're like, okay, clearly somebody was murdered, but you don't know who was murdered and you don't know who's responsible. And so then we get flashbacks of like this group of women and how, like what led up to the murder. You know, the thing that sucks is that this book, it had all of the potential, it had all of the ingredients to be a new favorite, but Oh my god, this book was so frustrating to read, unfortunately. I don't know, I feel like I'm very picky with how I like books in this way, you know, because I'm all for like rich people drama, murder vibes, gossiping, like I'm all for that, but sometimes it just comes across in the wrong way. Like, for example, I really enjoyed The Hunting Wives. I thought it was fun. I thought it was chaotic. I thought the characters were like, ooh, it was interesting. But for some reason, this just felt like high school drama to me. It felt very immature. Like, the way that these women behaved in this book, it was just ridiculous. Like, to the point where I just, like, I didn't even know if I could read it. I didn't even know if I could finish it. I wanted to DNF it so many times because every chapter I was, like, rolling my eyes. I was like, oh my god, is this shit real? Like, this is some, like, housewives type of energy and I just I wasn't here for it it wasn't fun and by the end like by the time I got to the, all the reveals I was so annoyed I just didn't care anymore so I ended up giving this one two stars it was just not for me the next book that I read was actually the Spanish love deception I listened to this romance book while I was like you know in the process of moving and it was actually really nice to listen to this on audio because I just needed a good like escapism you know something to take my mind off of all the stress of moving I usually like I'm really picky about romance books on audio and I don't always love them and I mean don't get me wrong there were a few uh cringy sex scenes in this book that were not pleasant or fun to read out to listen to on audio but for the most part I actually really enjoyed this book I had fun with these characters I think their names are Catalina and Aaron I will say though I know it's such a nitpicky thing but I wasn't a huge fan of the audiobook narrator I just thought her voice was like a little bit obnoxious at times if I'm being honest like she wasn't my favorite choice for an audiobook narrator but the chemistry between these characters was really great on audio. I thought, you know, this story has a lot of my favorite romance tropes, including slow burn, and this was like one of the slowest burns. But you know, we do love the fake dating trope in this house. We do love it. So that was like the main reason why I was really invested in this. I do think though that this book is a little bit too long. Like there's just no reason a romance book needs to be as long as this one is. But at the same time, I don't know, there were a few slower parts, there were a few cringy sex scene parts, but for the 
most part I had a really good time listening to this on audio it really was able to like take my mind off of things and I was getting lost in the romance and in the banter and I just thought it was cute you know it was cute I don't think um this book deserves to be as hyped up as it currently is because I've been seeing this book everywhere and actually after seeing some mixed reviews from my friends I went into this book actually thinking I wouldn't like it because I thought it would be one of those like super overhyped romances and while I do think it is a little bit overhyped I still had a fun time I gave it four stars it's not like a new all-time favorite romance for me but I had a fun time listening to it and I would still recommend it and then the next two books that I read this month were The Heartstopper volumes three and four um if you didn't know previously I had only read volumes one and two and then because the show was coming out this month I was like okay I seriously need to like catch up on this series and if you didn't know these are both graphic novels and both of these are you know young adult gay romance graphic novels that follow these characters Nick and Charlie and um as expected both of these were five stars both of these books were absolutely everything I think my favorite volume out of all four volumes so far is volume three. There was just something so special to me about volume three and I obviously can't really talk about it because it would spoil you know some of the previous volumes but volume three just like has my whole heart. Like this one was somehow simultaneously like really lighthearted and kind of cute because they're still like a little bit you know forbidden or they're kind of like sneaking around still but also this one starts to feel a bit more heavy, you know, like this one starts to touch on some like mental health topics and it, you know, you can feel like their relationship is getting deeper in this book and I think that that's why this one is my personal fave, like volume three just holds my entire soul. Um, and then volume four is also really, really good, but this one is a lot more sad and depressing than I was expecting. Like this one, you know, starts to touch on mental health topics that are hard and then this one just really like dives straight into your soul with it you know so I do think though both of them are five stars I love them both so much but volume three is my favorite out of all of the volumes and I can't wait I know there's still volume five coming out so I just can't wait like these books just make me so happy and like genuinely if you just need a good pick-me-up if you just need a good smile a good escape from the world Heartstopper it's amazing it's worth the hype the tv show is just as phenomenal by the way like I think I love the tv show maybe even more or just as much as the graphic novels. It's just incredible. And then the next book I read this month was the book troop pick for this month, which was Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. And unfortunately, sadly, this was my one star book of the month. I know I originally, I did do a reading vlog earlier this month where I read this book and a few other thrillers. And I said in that reading vlog that I was going to give it two stars. But after the book troop live show, which I will have linked down below, I was talking with my friends about it in the live show, you know, Mar Mike, Marcy, and Katie. And after talking about it with them, I felt like I needed to lower my rating to one one star because looking back on this book I don't have any good memories with it I only have complaints about it and there's nothing really redeeming enough about this book to me to give it anything higher than a one star because everything that I have to say about this book is a complaint because you know one I think nine characters it was really hard to follow there were so many characters it was very easy to get confused and I think it's insane that it has nine characters and I didn't give a shit about a single one like nine characters it was just a lot it was too much for my brain I also think the writing style on this was so boring and just so like clinical and like info dumpy and I just didn't give a crap like I just didn't care and then lastly um you know the ending was like one of my least favorite reveals and like plot twists ever maybe in a thriller book like I was really not a big fan of the reveal at the end of this book and it made me so frustrated like honestly in that moment I should have just one start it because I don't have anything good to say about this book and that makes me sad because I do like Peter Swanson but I feel like this might be one of his worst books yet and I just don't know like he definitely won't be a book true pick anymore in the future which you know it sucks because I do love this author and I love some of his previous stuff but like ugh. The next book that I read this month was All Her Little Secrets by Wanda M. Morris and this was actually a book that I read for the Literally Dead book club um, which is Kayla's book club if you didn't know. She invited me on to be a co-host for the month of April so the live show has just recently happened so I'll have it linked down below if you missed it but this book was interesting. This one's like a legal thriller, you know, it's not something that I usually gravitate towards where we're following a corporate attorney. But this book was really interesting because we're following this protagonist named Elise and she is a corporate attorney and she is sleeping with her white boss. And then one day when she goes into his office, she sees that he has a gunshot wound to the head and she just flees. Like instead of calling the police, she just decides to like run, flee, flee the scene. Don't tell anybody she was there. And then throughout this story, we kind of get flashback chapters 
chapters of like the 1970s and then we go back and forth between her point of view in the present day and the flashback chapters and you spend a lot of time in this book trying to figure out how the past is connected to the present day and this book was really interesting it's not a new favorite of mine and I think that's mainly because I'm not a huge I'm not the biggest fan of you know like legal thrillers a lot of times I feel like a lot of lawyer talk just goes way over my head and I just can't get as invested in thrillers like these for some reason but I will say this story really kept me engaged there was a plot twist towards the end of part one like once it kind of gets revealed to us you know like why the past chapters are there and like how it's connected to the present day I got really invested after that point the twists at the end of this book were really shocking like there were some things going down that I was like what the hell and it had very similar vibes to Ace of Spades I feel like this is like a more adult version of Ace of Spades and it also remi reminded me a lot of the other black girl like the protagonist that we're following is the only black woman in an office full of white people it just had very similar energy to that book very similar vibes but yeah this one I ended up giving this one 3.5 out of 5 stars and then the next book that I read this month was Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough and this is the last book that I read for that thriller reading vlog I did where I read all three of these books and this book was a freaking trip because this is one that I just wasn't sure about you know because Sarah Pinborough at, up until this point she's kind of been a one-hit wonder for me with behind her eyes and her books are kind of known now for having these like crazy ridiculous just out there plot twists and so starting this book I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it because we're just following this protagonist who she's going to be turning 40 soon and she's nervous because when her mother turned 40 she kind of stopped sleeping and almost you know lost her mind basically because of it like lost her sanity and so she's scared because a lot of people will say like oh you remind me so much of your mother and she's starting to feel like she can't sleep at night and so she's fearing turning 40 because she feels like something's gonna happen when she turns 40 and she's gonna like lose her mind just like her mom did and so that's like the basic premise of this and so at the start of this book like the first 50 pages were so slow I thought about DNFing this book a few times to be honest but then towards about like 80 to 100 pages in the story really picked up for me and I got really invested I think uh the the relationship that this main character has with her sister was really interesting and that's one of the things that kept me the most intrigued with this and also the you know unique relationship that she had with her kids she has a teenage daughter and then she has like a little boy and the little boy it starts doing some creepy shit like creepy drawings and things like that you know and I love I love um you know kids doing creepy drawings and in, in books like that's one of my favorite tropes so it ended up actually being a pretty enjoyable read for me um I ended up giving this one four stars uh the ending of this book was shocking in a way like there are parts of this ending that are really shocking to me and then there's one twist that I wasn't the biggest fan of just because I thought it was so obvious the whole time um but there is kind of like an out there weird element to the end of the story that I kind of I kind of liked it you know it was kind of different it was kind of strange and so yeah this was a four-star thriller for me it's just it's stayed on my mind for a while which is rare these days you know because the next thriller that I read was Just Married by Kirsten Modglin and this one was I feel like this author just might not be for me, you know, because I feel like her books sound like they're gonna be really great and they sound like they're gonna be really cool, but then I'm just not a huge fan of her writing style. I feel like her writing style is just very simplistic and like basic, but in a way that feels like it almost feels like it's fan fiction or something, like it needs an editor, or I don't even know how to explain that. But you know, of course, this book has a super interesting premise, you know, because we're following this couple who they go to this little cabin in the woods for their honeymoon, you know, they're just trying to get away. And and then they see this man that's like out in the woods that they think might be watching them and then they start getting all these like creepy messages and notes that are like left on their doorstep that's like uh she's dead you're next and they get all this like creepy shit and she doesn't even know if she can trust her husband and it sounds like everything that I would love in a thriller you know and I do think the first half of this book was so good I was putting yellow tabs anytime I got kind of like creeped out because I just thought it was so interesting and while the writing isn't the best you know like I would compare this to almost like the mindfuck series where like the writing is basic at best but you're just kind of invested for like the plot and like what's happening with these characters but unfortunately once we hit part two it completely shifts like 
points of views and characters of who we're following and it just got so boring and repetitive to me and once we hit part two i already saw where the plot twist was going i was like okay this is very obvious and so then i wasn't a huge fan of the rest of the book which sucks because i do feel like the story had a lot of potential it started off really strong in my opinion but then you know towards the end it just completely lost me so i ended up giving this one two stars All right and then the next book i read was the first book that i read for spring flingoween and that is hidden pictures by jason reculik and this one actually goes on sale may 3rd and this was an arc that was sent to me by Flatiron Books, which I am so grateful for because I really enjoyed this one. We're following this woman named Mallory who is fresh out of rehab and she gets this job babysitting this boy named Teddy. And this boy named Teddy is kind of a handful because he has an imaginary friend that is kind of creepy and then he also draws these creepy ass photos and it's so cool because there's a lot of like photos that are included or like drawings that are included throughout the book. Like that's his creepy ass imaginary friend. And there's just like a lot of like child drawings that are included throughout the story that just made it so cool it just I love when books include something extra in them like that you know so it was really cool to have the pictures kind of like throughout the book you know like they're they're a big part of the story and you know as I just said when I was talking about insomnia I love the trope of like a kid drawing some like creepy shit and the parents trying to figure out why the kid's drawing that and if the imaginary friend could be real or not this one is definitely, you know, it's being marketed as a thriller mystery book, but I personally feel like at times this book reads more like a horror book because of the like creepy imaginary friend and because of these creepy drawings. It's just very like unsettling at times and I really loved that about it. But at the same time, there's a really great mystery happening in this book behind why this is going on and what's happening with that. And so, I don't know, I was actually, I really liked the plot twist at the end. I know some people are saying they didn't like it as much and for a second, like the direction it was starting to go into, I was like, oh no, absolutely not. And then luckily it didn't really go there. It kind of went in a different direction than I was expecting. And then I ended up really liking it. So I don't know. I thought it was surprising. It was spooky. The vibes were on point and it was just overall a really great read. I gave it four stars. I also read during Spring Flingoween, I read this uh, graphic novel called Feelings, which this one, it doesn't really, you know, it probably doesn't count towards Spring Flingoween because it wasn't spooky. But this is like a really beautiful graphic novel that's kind of about like mental health. Like it's like a nonfiction book about mental health and how you know your feelings might change through the seasons and so it's talking about you know like seasonal depression and anxiety and how that works with your brain and I just thought it was really beautiful like this artwork is some of the most beautiful like artwork that I've ever seen I love the different color palettes throughout the seasons and how you can really tell like the mood and the energy just from the colors that have that are chosen for each season and I don't know I thought it was so beautiful so well done I gave this four stars I really enjoyed it you know it actually really made me feel something and I love how spring was at the end of this like because it starts with summer and then we go into you know the other months but I love how it ended with spring because we're currently in spring and so it just made me feel like all renewed and like this was like the perfect time to read this so I mean I definitely rec recommend checking this one out if it sounds at all interesting to you because I thought it was so beautiful. The next book that I read for Spring Flingoween was An Honest Lie by Taryn Fisher. I was sent an ARC copy of this but this one just went on sale April 26th and I feel like this was honestly like my last try with Taryn Fisher you know because <laughs> she's written a few books most recently that I just really have not enjoyed and unfortunately this one is another one that I really didn't enjoy and I don't know what it is but I just I wanted to love this book so bad and I just I couldn't do it. It was so boring. Um, in this story, we're following this woman named Rainy who lives at the top of this tiger mountain. And it's another one of those books where, you know, she has this like really close relationship, friendship with all of these women, but they're all kind of toxic. All of the girls in that group invite her to a girls weekend out in Vegas. And so she agrees. But then one of the girls goes missing when they're in Vegas and it kind of like takes off from there. The story really takes off. But what I wasn't expecting um, with this book is the fact that we would get so many flashback chapters of this girl Rainey's life when she was younger. Like it literally talks nothing about her past or the flashbacks on the back of this book but I will just warn you that almost every other chapter we get a long ass flashback chapter like long chapters of her past and her teenagehood and what happened when she was younger and like at times it would be like not even every other chapter there would be like back to back chapters of the past chapters like I felt like the past chapters were more common than the present day chapters and it sucked because like I mean to be honest I didn't really give a fuck about either you know the past or the present chapters but I was 
was just a tad bit more invested in the present day chapters with like the Vegas trip and what was going on with that. And this is another book where it just felt so repetitive. It felt so boring. And by the last 50 pages, I was just like, oh my god, get to the point. Like, just get to the point. I'm done. And so I gave this one two stars, but honestly, the more that I talk about it and the more that I like rage about it. I feel like I could give it one star. Like it could be that low for me again. But at the same time, like, I don't know, this was a slight improvement over the wrong family, I think. I don't know, like I need to give it more thought, but this was so disappointing. I am so sad about it. And then the next book that I read for Spring Flingoween was You've Lost a Lot of Blood, which this one is one that I'm so excited about. The author was actually kind enough to send me this book. And if you didn't know, he is the same author as Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke, which is one of my favorite horror books of all time. And this one is another, it's like a horror novella, but it's also like a novella within a novella because there's a short story that's like included within this book and so the main book that we're following is between these two guys and one of the guys is thinking that he wants to kill the other one who's his boyfriend and his point of view is just so interesting because the way he thinks about him is just so sinister and just so dark but like also so fascinating while that story is happening about how he's thinking about how he wants to kill his boyfriend we also get his story that he's written in between their story so it's like a story within a story because we get this book that he's been writing called you've lost a lot of blood and then also in between those chapters we get like random bits of like poetry that he's written and different things like that i don't know this book is so unique i can honestly say i've never really read anything quite like this it sounds like it would be confusing when i'm explaining it but it's honestly like once you get into it it's really easy to understand like what's going on and you know <laughs> like which book you're reading and things like that My my only complaint with this book is that I was way more invested in what was happening with the two boyfriends at the beginning than I was with the story within a story. Like I felt like at times the story within the story was just a little bit too long or like I just didn't care as much about that even though that story definitely got interesting towards the end even though I do feel like some of it went way over my head because I was like what the heck is going on. But also I just I don't know I love this author's writing style. I just love it. It's so grotesque grotesque. It's so like gross and like over the top but like everything that I look for when I read horror like just the way that he describes scenes like the vocabulary that he uses it just makes you feel unsettled you know like it's just really well written and there were a few moments in this book that I was just like like my mouth was hanging open in shock because I was like oh my god like how does he come up with this shit like it's just it's creepy it's weird and i just feel like if you enjoyed things have gotten worse since we last spoke if you liked it because it was different and weird i feel like you would like this too um i ended up giving this one four stars i feel like i could take an entire like i kind of want an entire short story just about the boyfriends from the beginning and like their story throughout this book because i found them to be so fascinating like so fascinating and then the last book that i read this month and for spring flingoween was all i want by darcy bell and this book was another um yeah like you know it's a it's a piece of shit i'm sorry uh i feel like this month even though i did have like mostly higher ratings which makes me happy um for the books that i rated low like i really really didn't like them you know like i feel passionately about the fact that i didn't like them this book is one that has kind of a similar premise to like other books that i've read this month because i'm always such a sucker for this premise like i will read any book that involves a haunted house it's just one of my favorite things to read about and in this book we're following this couple emma and ben and they fall in love with this you know giant fixer-upper house in what is it new york yeah it's in upstate new york but then there's all this like creepy backstory on the house you know and in this book we do get Get, you know flashback chapters of like the history on the house and learning more about the house and this book I feel like it started off strong enough you know like it started off interesting I was like okay it was really easy to get into like the writing is very simplistic and easy I was immediately invested in the story of like this couple and this house it was like setting up the vibes you know like I love the like spooky haunted creepy vibes and it was giving me that in the first like 50 to 100 pages or so but then I feel like this book just started to get so repetitive. It started to get so boring and dull and I just needed things to be happening. But then by, like towards the end, oh my gosh, it just got so ridiculous. I was like, what is going on? What is going on? And so I ended up giving this one two stars and it's crazy because after I was like about halfway through the book, I looked up uh, the, the Goodreads, you know, reviews just because I get curious like to see what other people are feeling about it and this book has a 2.9 out of 5 on Goodreads like holy shit it's usually rare for me to want to pick up a book that has lower than like a 3.5 rating on Goodreads so like holy shit if I had if I had paid attention and like looked at the ratings before I picked this up like 
like I don't even think I would have given it the time of day but you know it happened so yeah those are all of the books that I read in the month of April you know as I said April was a it was a busy chaotic month so I am excited that I was able to read as much as I did let me know how many books did you read in the month of April what was the best book that you read this month yeah I'm really looking forward to May and all of the books that I'm attempting to read in the month of May I'm just so excited so yeah thank you so much for watching as always let me know how April went for you and if you have anything exciting happening in May thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon with another video bye